What's up guys, this is Lord Natural, aka Naturalism of Yahweh, and I got some brand new information for you today. But first, allow me to show you the new entry to my channel. It is called Newspaper Discovery. Wow. Newspaper Discoveries is where we dive into the newspaper articles just to see what took place in history. These things could be very controversial topics that could shake the foundations of the public. Mainstream media doesn't want you to know these things. So therefore, they always say, we got to update this. We got to update that. You cannot update history. That's the whole point. So this is a new addition to my channel. I hope you love it. I hope you like. I hope you subscribe. Because this is going to be a wonderful adventure. The first newspaper that we're reading today is Evidence is Convincing. It's by Brian Times, uh, 1982. And it was written by Jim Lewis of United Press International. So let's dive into it. It says, when Norsemen came to North America about the year 1700 BC, some of the people they mingled with may have been pygmies. Both the theory that Northern Europeans had established a key trading post near Toronto during the Bronze Age, about 3,700 years ago, and left a detailed record of their business. And that a race of, pig of dwarf pygmies once Rome portions of what is now East Tennessee are two of the claims advanced by Barry Fell in Bronze Age America. Little Brown and Co. $17.95. And it says the author concedes that his portions are viewed as preposterous by some archaeologists. Why? Everybody know that the pygmies are Negroes. But it's preposterous. Why is it preposterous? It's because it doesn't go with the scientific world today. They don't want people to know that Negroes, the American Negroes, are the original ones here. We had a span of almost about 500 years of well-known information that Negroes have always been here and at the end of that 200 years they changed the information but we know what happened we know who is responsible for the education system john d rockefeller we know what they did we know so when we read stuff like this we got to know what is true and what is not the archaeologists they believe in darwinism they don't want to place Negroes here, but that's all they keep finding. Soon as they find an Asianic person that look like the Native American, to, the Native American today, they jump for joy. But soon as they find us, oh, something must be wrong here. Preposterous. <laughs> let's let's go ahead and get it. Let's go ahead and finish this. Let's finish this, okay? Preposterous by some archaeologists. But this event, I mean, this evidence displayed with numerous reproductions of actual writing and photographs is convincing indeed to the reader. Fell contends that the Norse king Wuden Lith, Lith from Oslo set up, his, set up his North American headquarters at what is now um, Peterborough in the Toronto, Canada area. Uh, the monarch's purpose for the trip in the 17th uh, century BC. 
was to obtain copper, which has needed by his people who recently emerged from the Stone Age. Step by step, the Bronze Age scholar and student of ancient languages demonstrates the similarity of written language at the uh, Peter uh, Burrow, Burrow location with other Norse inscriptions uh, preserved on rocks. And again, we're talking about pygmies. They said these people had intermingled. We know these was their original people. And they want to say, oh, the Norse people came and had intermingled with the pygmies. We know what is true and what is not. Yeah. So like I said, these Norse people they're talking about, we know they are the original pygmies. The pygmies was everywhere. But they, Africa don't have a patent on the pygmies. They don't. So don't you think for one second that the pygmies are originally from Africa. They were everywhere. And they didn't come out of Africa. All right. These Norse people was the original pygmies. And they trying to say, oh, they mixed with them and all that other stuff. And it says the Norse influences in some form are form are found in such diverse places in North America. According to the author, as California, Nevada, British Columbia, Alberta, uh, Ontario, New Hampshire, Vermont, West Virginia, and Tennessee. Those people were there. But it says fails theses attack thesis attacks um what to say the ingrained belief that columbus was the first european to visit north america along with the less widely held view uh, that vikings scandinavians uh came as early as the 10th century AD. fell also thinks that the norseman intermarried thinks thinks intermarried with american indians on the plains also in the bronze age remember these are pygmies these are norsemen is pygmies they already a lot of said oh these people intermingle with the pygmy come on now as the author points out king wooden makes no claim to discovering no new land at his colony in the 17 bc and it says this uh, leads fell to the conclusion that he was not the first Norseman to travel to what is now North America. Fell notes the Europeans probably encountered a race of dwarf or pygmies in North America. His evidence for this is the skulls of pygmies found in an archaeological uh, digs in East Tennessee. The finds show Indian pygmy and Norse skulls fragments. So it was all three. So they found mongoloid, pygmy, and Norse. To me, they all Negroes. To me, they all Negroes. But this word Indian, it can mean two different types of people. It can mean literally two, because you can have the mongoloid that's being classed as the Indian, and you can have the negroid that being classed as the Indian. So we really don't know. But we got the pygmies and we got the Norse. Maybe we consider the Norse as the Morse. Maybe, hypothetically. That's for advanced learners right there, for those that know where we are today and who the people are today, and a little bit more about this history. It's a lot to think about. Right, but it says Fell says an almost complete skull of a pygmy was found in 1980, and that it shows a completely developed set of teeth, but with a brain capacity the size of a person seven years old. He says this proves that there was intermingling between Europeans, pygmies, and Northern Europeans. It doesn't show that there were. <laughs> intermingling all you did was found a pygmy school just because you saw them side by side together don't mean they intermingled they could have been at war radiocarbon testing of some of these bones date them to the third century the third century it looked 
therefore as if a mixed population of several races had lived in East Tennessee area. It was diverse. And in all probability, they would have interbred, he writes. Now I can see it because it's diverse. No pygmies are known to have survived to uh, to modern times in North America. Yes. <laughs> Do you know how many short folks is in the South? Do you know how many short people? Literally, the average height of a Negro in America, the average height of a Negroid person in America is at least 5'6 to 5'9. How tall was the pygmies? There was at least a 4'9. So if there was intermingling, the majority of the Negro population is reaching up to, I say it again, from 5'6. I'm talking about the males, from 5'6 to 5'9. The tall ones, that's... Man. But we do have tall ones amongst us, too. But the average height of the Indians is literally in the fives. Pygmies, yes, is in the fours. But we do have some real short-ass people here in the South. They did not die off. Y'all wrote them off. Let's read that again. It says, no pygmies are known to have survived to modern times in North America at at least not in the United States or Canada, but it does seem likely that the pygmies may have been among the native peoples encountered by the first European. <laughs> you, 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 y'all are seeing this, right? They just showing, they literally telling you that there, that there were Negroes here. They literally telling you, and the native peoples, which is the who, Mongolians, encountered by the first European explorers to Eastern North America, Fell, um, Fell concludes, Bronze Age America is a fascinating and convincing argument for the proportion that ancient mariners from Northern Europe traded, intermingled, and left a record of their achievement about 1,700 years before the birth of Christ. <laughs> Now we're back at another newspaper discovery. And this is the next one right here. This is it says from out the past. From out the past. Maybe relics of pygmy race. And here that is right here. Here's a little picture. Here's a little picture. The skulls. Man, they you draw and everything like that. Remains of a strange race dug up near the city. All right. But we ain't going to read this. We're going to dive into it down here. Now, we're going to read. We're not going to read all of it. But we're going to get the meat. So here we go. It says, maybe relics of pygmy race. Small malformed skulls dug up near this city. Archaeologists who found them believe they indicate that tribe of little people once dwelt here or that primitives destroyed the un unfit. It says revealing either a race of hither to unknown pygmies or the or orchestra size or ostracizing. Uh, <laughs> I can't even say that right. But let's continue. And it says of the unit by the aborigines of the pacific coast 30 strange malformed skulls and other interesting remains were dug up last week within 50 miles of the of this city by the most boros and charles t um, brown and it says amateurs of archaeology now we got to keep up with these people because these are the ones that basically went against the grain so keep up with these names of these people so you can do your own research and produce your own content and boom we got the science back on the show but here we go it says they now they now repose in their collection of the latter at the Chukamanga Chukamanga and it says whether pygmies are primitive form of eugenics is a question that I can't answer," said Mr. Um Bowers. 
and it says yesterday the here we go the skulls are by far the smallest that i have encountered in my 30 years of excavating for indian remains in california so again y'all know who the pygmies is the negroes and it says the malformation of the skulls may be highly significant compared with skulls of the known indians of california the, I mean, those recently excavated are a third smaller. The mal, um formation takes every form from a uh, phrenological eccentricities to eye sockets that are halfway round to the ears. Whoa. And it says, though, I can't answer whether these were the skulls of the unfit, the morally depri um, deprived, uh, deprived, who had been ostracized, or those of pygmies, I can't answer another question," said Mr. Bo um, Boers. It is that these are the skulls of fully grown men and women. The instruments buried with them show this, also the maturity of the teeth. Though, for reasons of expediency, uh, neither Mr. Bowers nor Mr. Brown will reveal the situation of the burying grounds. Why? Why won't they reveal it? <laughs> Why? They stated that it was in an inaccessible site just at the rise of the foothills. So they know where our people is buried, right? But they don't want people to go out there and know because it's going to destroy this whole out of Africa theory, all this bullshit. They know it. They probably stumbled across some real, real ancient bones, but they just don't want to reveal nothing to no one. So we got to dive into these newspaper articles to know what the fuck that happened. But it says... Here we go. I located this village more than 30 years ago, and I, it said Mr. Um, Bo, um, Bowers. And, it, and he said, but never excavated there until this week. The bones were found intermingled as if the bodies had been buried um, one on top of the other. The site is a good one. The village on a slope above the burying ground with a good spring nearby. The fact that the village had a good site with a fine spring leads Mr. Bo um, Bowers to believe that the mystery is not one that can be answered by asserting that these skulls are those of the ostracized. As he pointed out, savage tribes are not in the habit of cuddling the undesirable. See, they try to make their own theories with this shit. It says, rather go to the opposite extreme in their treatment of them. The crushing and of some of the skulls as if by a stone axe leads Mr. Bowers to surmise that perhaps this little band of pygmies was attacked by an invading tribe of larger Indians. But that such but that such a band of pygmies could have lingered on down into the historic times in the Southland, for they indubitably <laughs> did without leaving some traditions of their existence to waft its way to us is a matter that mystifies. <laughs>this is the Richmond planet, Richmond, Virginia. Negroes were the real discoverers of America and the first settlers on this continent. The Indians being descendants of this prehistoric Negroid stock, says a noted scientist. You hear that fan goofies? All right, let's go ahead and get into this literature. Dr. Dixon Stoddler's 
Let's go. This right here is Dr. Dixon Startlers. And it says, U.S. Scientists. Paper read before, don't know what that means. Association, wait, National. Yeah, National Association for Advancement of Science. Some wish to ignore it. Headline, headline, read all about it. Some wish to ignore it. It says to Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, dark, uh, December 29th. It says a new uh, method of exploiting atoms and thus transmuting or disintegrating elements. A new theory on the origin of the American Indians, which puts Negroes or Negroid types among their ancestors and the latest researches researches into mysteries of life itself were among were among the contributions which were said today before the American Association for the advancement of science which practically concluded its session Dr. Lewis Bell told of breaking uh, carbon atoms. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can read that part. I guess they don't got nothing to do with it, but we can read it. It says Dr. Lewis Bell told of breaking carbon atoms up into helium by the use of high voltage. There you go. Yeah. So we learned we learned a little science today. We learned a little science today. Science. Okay. Now here is Dr. Roland B. Dixon. All right. Of Harvard said that a study of the earliest. Indian skulls indicated that some were descendants from blacks or Negroes. Again, two types of people in America. Others from primitive Australian stocks. Others from white resembling uh, the Nordics and others from Mongol or Turkish strands. All of whom crossing the Bering Strait prehistoric time no the mongols i told you it might listen the mongol evasion of america we know what we know all about it we know all about it all right and it says the most recent approaches which have been made to the solution of the riddle of life itself the process by which a protoplasma makes living individuals were described by dr Edmund by Wilson, hold on. DA Costa Professor of Zoology at Columbia University. Okay, do I gotta read all that? Do I gotta read that crap? Hold on. Let's let's look at it. What is this? Okay. Okay, here we go. I guess that was another topic. Okay, here it is right here. I think this is it. It says many other important and instrumental interesting contribution to science were made at a score of sessions during that day. Dr. Dixon's paper in which he declared that Negroid groups which crossed the Bering Strait I disagree with that or never mind no I don't disagree because the first Mongo Mongoloid people were Negroid type people. Again I don't know how they became pale but again I'm going to discuss it in a Mongol evasion but back to it and it says Negroid groups which crossed the Bering Straits were among the American Indian ancestors. Uh, calls, it says ancestors caused a great stir in anthropology uh, uh, section. And it says from his statements, Negroid peoples would appear to have been the first discoverers of America. Others who crossed the Bering Straits thousands of years ago to become the ancestors of the American Indians, to become the ancestors of the American Indians, were people of white stock relocated to the so-called Caucasus group, according to Dr. Dixon. Turkish tribes and other Mongolians and the black Australians blended in various uh, proportions formed the different races of American Indians. Many tribes in the in the opinion of the speaker were largely Negroid in earlier times, but underwent transformation by mixing with other tribes and since the discovery of America by the infusion of white blood. That's not everybody. Cause look at us today. Come on. Let's see, 
what is this? I guess we can. Guess we can read the part. Is is this a, is this something? Let's read a little bit of it. It says assertions are based on school measurements, craniology. It says the earlier skulls of the Iroquois and some other Indians show strong Negroid features. Again, the earlier skulls of the Iroquois and some other Indians show strong Negroid features, continually modified from age to age as the Iroquois extended their power and territory, taking captives from the tribes and absorbing them. The whole theory is based on the minute, uh, on the minute measurements of tens of thousands of skulls, the different types of man and the old stone age, according to the theory, differ very sharply in the shape of their skulls. The middle type, combining the characteristics of the long heads and the broad heads, was probably rare in the early times and was formed by the blending of sharply uh, differentiated uh, ancient types, according to Dr. Dixon. His method was to measure thousands of Indian schools of the present day and thousands of years ago in the, in the effort to trace their characteristics to earlier Asianic and European stock. See, he's looking for that. <laughs> you see what he's looking for, what Dr. Dixon is looking for? He's looking for the Mongolo, the Mongoloid and Caucasians in America. That's what they're looking for. So guess what they're doing today? Guess what the fuck they're doing today? They are still looking for their people here in ancient time. Ain't no sense of looking at the Negroids, because you know why? Because we all over. We all over. That's all you're going to keep pulling out is just us. They stayed looking for them. So you see why they get so fucking happy when they see a Mongoloid type person or a Caucasian type person in an ancient region. They looking for themselves. As soon as they find that one goddamn school, they say, okay, everybody here was white. No, that's not true. Because they steady finding Negroid uh, scores everywhere in every single region on this earth. Okay? So you see it right there. You see what the anthropologist is trying to do and the archaeologist is trying to do. Disingenuous. It says the formation of the nasal uh, played a prominent part in the inquiry. Dr. Dixon who is the scientist of high standing had hardly finished his paper before two noted anthropologist Professor Franz Boas of Columbia University and Dr. Elise Hardelica. I've I, I seen these people before of the, of the United States National uh, Museum of, at Washington were on their feet to oppose him denying that such far-fetched conclusions could be uh, adduced on the basis of uh, skull measurements though hauling the paper as an important contribution to anthropology so you see that these people was already on the other side was already ready to deny him without the evidence without the burden of proof they were just quick to do this shit that's how the anthropology uh the archaeology and the anthropology that's how they that's how they is that's how they is they don't want all their lies to crumble down before them so they're gonna do whatever they can to make you look foolish to make you look stupid stupid to make you look stupid stupid he's not stupid he just went against you it says after explaining his method uh, of tracing racial genealogies dr dixon continued as follows for Europe, Asia, and Africa, the outcome was in general in, in close in close accord with the best conclusions uh, reached by other students, although in some instances the results were decidedly novel. It was in the New World, however, that the method led to conclusions most of uh, variants with ex uh, accepted uh, doctrine and which may perhaps be described as revolutionary. It is therefore of these conclusions that I wish to speak briefly. The current orthodox theory 
and regard to the aboriginal inhabitants of the american continent seem to be that they constitute a single race a lot with most closely to the people ordinarily grouped together as mongoloid and that they were de um, derived originally from the asianic continent you see what that fuck they made him do after he did all of his research and went up to these anthropologists and after he got embarrassed you see how they made him change his tone this is what they do this is what they do all the pain africans i ain't see i don't be seeing this stuff i don't be seeing this stuff because you don't be looking for it yes in the anthropology world they are disingenuous they know the truth but they don't want to tell the truth instead they will make you look like a novelist a fool a idiot stupid right before the people without even a burden of proof you better switch your tone and go with what the world says the world says all the idiots came from the asianic world so therefore you better get with the program because if you don't we're gonna embarrass you and you're gonna lose everything that's how they are now we can mix it up but they already said the Mon he, they said grouped together as mongoloid and that they were derived originally from the asianic continent playing games dr dixon asserted however that his investigation indicated a series of migration across the Bering Strait, the variations of indian types which have been regarded as a random um, varieties see you see it has been regarded as a random varieties they know it's very different, but they want to keep it one type, Asianic. That's all they want to do, which have been regarded as random varieties, uh, formed a district pattern, I mean, a distinct pattern, an indication of something about the history of different types. According to the, speak, uh, the speaker who said, they show a striking arrangement and a uh, analogies anal analogies I think I said that right to that uh, found in Europe and it says I believe it says or Asia so you see what the fuck they're trying to do now they're trying to place the Indians of, here, uh, of, the, of here even though they're a negro type they try to say oh no either they came from Asia or Europe you see you see what they're doing and it says, and that some also relegated to extreme marginal positions or refuge areas, refugee areas, as if they were the surviving remnants of ancient groups, while others occupy central positions such as uh, befit more recent and dominant types. Historically, also, the several types show a definite and orderly sequen uh, sequence Re uh, re repeated in both North and South America. On this basis, I believe we may assume that the aboriginal population of America at the period of the earliest European contact was that result of the blending of series of different racial types coming into the North America continent at different periods across the Bering Strait, Asia. See, that's his theory. It says, after giving a technical description of, of one type of Indian skull found in different parts of geologic, I mean, geographical uh, pattern, the speaker continued, and both continents, thus, this type is clearly an ancient one. This type, this type is clearly an ancient one as shown both in archaeological evidence and geographical distribution. The affiliation, which is suggested that this type will, I know, meet the an incredit, incredulity and strong opposition for, for on the basis of the method follow its nearest relatives 
are to be found in the Negroid and Asteroid populations of Malaysia, Melanesia, Australia, and portions of Southern Asia. So you see, he said the most ancient, the most ancient, I say it again, the most ancient of the Indian skulls. Okay. What is it? The one. The one. The one. To be found in the Negroid Australoid populations of Malaysia, Mel Melanesia, Australia, and portions of Southern Asia. So he he turns around and said, fuck it. I'm not gonna be disingenuous. I'm gonna go ahead and tell the truth. But he's still trying to say they came from another location. No, these people have always been here. They did not migrate out, out of Asia and came into America. They have always been here. I heard of the new theory that everybody came out of Australia. Life started in Australia. Then my, and America was the second to rise out and people migrated out, out of Australia and went to America. I don't know about that, but I have seen articles that Australia is the older country, is the oldest continent. But also we had the land of Mu too Which was there as well But it's now underwater So Hypothetically Let's just say if it was true Maybe our ancestors did came from uh, From Asia The Asianic world And then when America rose up Our people just went straight right there too Who knows Who knows how it went I don't know, but this is just another theory, the out of Asia theory, out of Asia theory, out of Australia theory. It's a good theory. It's something new. Yes. It's something. All right. By this, I do not mean to imply, however, that it means the Trans-Pacific Drift from uh, Melanesia to America shores, but rather that it reached the New World at an early date by way of e Eastern Asianic coast and the Bering Straits. While at the present day, there is not much superficial evidence of Negroid and Australoid Austral peoples in Eastern Asia, there are, I believe, indications that the peoples blended of them once extended all along these shores. You see? You see? Yeah, they're not there no more. They are, we already finished migrating. We already did what the hell we had to do. Of course. But those people are still there. There's still bits and people, bits and pieces of the people here, especially here in America. But they just call everybody Negro and say everybody came from Africa, which is fucking stupid. But to continue, in Neolithic times, such types were present in Cambodia and to, um, Tonkin and some of the wild tribes of Indochina still show un unmistakably, unmistakable uh, evidence of the survival there for China the data are as yet to to meager to be of much value although traces of the type seem to be found in the and new of Japan and especially uh, I'm not going to butcher that the evidence of its persistence is unmistakable more of a certain Supposedly, an ancient, uh, ancient cranial from the Aleutian Islands uh, offered still another link. So, they still providing facts that Negroes probably came from Negroes probably came from the Asianic land, then went to America when America wasn't even populated, or when America wasn't even fully America yet. Uh, I don't know what the hell they're trying to go with with this, but hey, he still said Negroes was the first here. Hopefully of uh, substantiation If one follows this type of Geographically From southern What they say India Yeah India For, exa for example East and north Along the Asianic coast To the uh, American areas In which it occurs A progressive weakening 
of the superficial Negroid characteristics may be observed. And it says the mini, the minimum pigmentation growing lighter, the hair straighter, the face less progenitheous, wait, the face less progenitheous in certain well recognized uh, Negroid characteristics of the skull, such as the nasal. Uh, false, 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 something like that. Become more and more attuned until they almost wholly disappear. Continuing, uh, where? Yeah, right here. It says absurd, as the suggestion appears at first sight. I believe that with fuller. Archaeological, archaeological material from America in Eastern Asia, the fact of a very early Negroid austro Australoid stratum will be fully substantiated. The prehistoric whites, prehistoric whites, that's unheard of, isn't it? The prehistoric whites came from, I mean, came first according to this theory. No, that's not true. The prehistoric blacks came later and pushed the whites to the wall or to the outer, uh, what's that say? In most, uh, no, outer limits. Oh, sorry. The outer limits of the continent. The prehistoric blacks came later, that's a lie, and pushed the whites to the wall or to the outer limits of the continent. In North America, the speaker continued this type as thus mainly represented among the Eskimo of the whole northern or northeastern uh, margin of the continent of Greenland and South America among the living and extinct tribes, no tribes and extinct, of the extreme south and southeast. Of all types, it occupies the remotest margins as though it were of all forms of the oldest in the new world. After a technical uh, description of the scores of this type, the speaker continued. Its relationships, its relationships, uh, I say with that group, which forms the basis of what is commonly called the Nordic race, but whose represent, uh, representatives in Central and Eastern Asia lack the exceptional blondness which marks the Baltic branch. Least you dismiss the incredible, the incredible um, incredibility, or worse, this suggestion that what may be called Caucasian elements are traceable in the New World. May I remind you that the cranial indistinguished able from a typical Nordic that cranial indistinguished able from typical Nordic ring hand grammar scores from Germany from characteristics of early Bronze Age Corrigans and of uh, I'm not gonna butcher that on the upper I'm not gonna butcher that and central southern Siberia that apparently similarly the di <laughs> dialect called cephalic uh, cranial uh, supposedly Neolithic age have been found in the trans not for the butcher it what's that say by call and it says in others of definitely Neolithic date in Japan that further in the living population of parts of China individuals of this same type apparently with brown hair and hazel eyes are not in Franklin it is in my belief that this type, which had its proximate area of dispo uh, dispersal in the Eurasianic uh, steppes, spread very early eastward and toward Bering Straits, and so made its way into America. Here, later immigrants gradually forced the oldest stratum of populations further and further back until in both continents it was regulated 
to the utmost uttermost uh, marginal districts so they trying to say white people was the first ones here no they wasn't because they already said that the Australian or Negro type people was the most ancient here so you see how they try to put themselves here you see how they try to do it so they trying to they gotta they you see how they always try to put themselves in that's all I gotta say excuse me excuse me Indian not single race Indian not single race so this is the next part of it it says and brief the theory were proposed would regard the American Indian as not a single race, but as a complex of four main racial elements coming into the continent at different periods. The two earliest of these survived in any degree of purity only along the con uh, the continental, uh, uh, I'm not going to butcher that, while the fourth and the latest uh, comer formed the dominant elsement. I mean, else. Yeah, else, I mean element and great majority of the historic populations. The current theory, which regards the Indian as a unit type diverse, I mean derived. I said, I said, oh my god. The current theory, which regards the Indian as a re, as a unit type, derives this from the northeastern portion of the Asiatic continent, but it neglects to take into account the fact that although the present majority type and that region does strongly resemble the dominant in the American continents in historic times there is much evidence to lead us to believe that that at the time when the earliest migrations of crossing Bering Straits occurs the race the racial characteristics of the people then and uh, occupation of northeastern Asia were radically different so that if the people of the period came from America they would have brought a very different type from that found among the majority of the American Indians at the time of the discovery for Europe particularly Western Europe we possess a vast mass of evidence indicating the successful appearance and spread of several drifts of people of very type of Neolithic down to medieval times. For Africa and Asia, the archeological and his historic data prove the same, although the materials are as yet to mager in general to make the record as clear as it is in Europe. Why then? If in, if in all the rest of the world, we know that the living peoples have a complex, often a very complex history. Should we deny that similar process occurred in America? Why do they, why do they deny it? It was the same, just like how it was in Africa, just like how it was in Europe, just like how it was in Asia, just like it was the same in America. They want to downplay America so much because they want to call it the new world. It's not new. It's been here. To one approaching the question of the of the racial history of man uh, without without bias, it seems as if all these students who have dealt with the problem of the origin of the Indian regarded America as indeed a new world as exempt from experience of the old and as one of which the laws the principles and conclusions which were valid where did not apply there did not apply sorry in america we find basket makers uh cranial uh almost certainly some thousands of years old to be characteristically uh of one type while those of a later population are equally clearly of another see current orthodox opinion declares the later to be a mere normal variant of the former and without significance as proving the succession of racial types yet these differences are precisely the same both in character and degree as 
those which we find between the long um, barrel and round barrel cranial in England. After looking forward to much opposition to his hypotheses, the speaker continued, the solution here offered may be largely altered in details, but it's fundamentally it's a fun, it's a fundamental thesis that the Aboriginal peoples of America are not of one race, but a complex of many. Will I feel sure be sustained? And it says the foregoing article is called called from the New York Times account of the session of the National National association of the advancement of science oh and i forgot to see this part right here we already read the rest of it it says indian skulls prove black ancestry excavations under indian mounds in the west to be continued wow we gotta see this we gotta we gotta find this article we gotta find this article we gotta find it all right guys So clearly we can see y'all that I showed y'all from these newspaper discoveries that black people have always been here in America. Yes, there were a, a few assumptions and speculations and conjectures here and there. And we see that the mainstream so-called scientific world did not want to accept that. But we still got some good people out there that goes against the grain. I hope that you like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Comment. And also, share this video and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And tune in next time in Newspaper Discovery.